Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about upset theory. And now this is uh, upset square corner, more specifically, theory. Now, I did a video where I had made an upset square corner. And in that video, I used just a little bit of 3 8 inch square stock, or 9 mil square stock. I think it's 9 mil, 3 8 is to make this upset square corner. Now, as you can see, this is a very clean corner. There's no cold shuts in it. It's square on the inside and mostly square on the out. I needed to address it a little bit further than what I did in the video, but I figured it was good enough to take and make the point of what I was looking at or what I was getting after, if you will, which was a square corner. Be hooked over on a square like so, okay? So I was trying to take and showcase in that video how to properly do an upset square corner. So it was more about the technique than the final product in that case. So today we're gonna to have a proper discussion about upset square corners and how they're formed and the reason why you wanna form them a certain way. Now, like I said in the other video, an upset corner or an upset square corner is supposed to be upset. That's kind of the key element there. It, otherwise, they would have just called it, oh, make a square corner, which is not very possible, usually, without thinning the material or doing a draw away technique. I've done another video on that, and I'll put the link to both these videos in the description below, and I will link them up at the end of this video as well. Today, all we're going to do is we're going to discuss this. So if you're not into a lecture, move on to one of the other channel, move on to one of the other channels out there on YouTube or one of my other videos uh, where I have more of a tutorial base. We will be doing another video on this where we will be putting all this that I'm teaching right now into practice. Practicing what I preach. So what I've got laid out here so you can screenshot this for your own, uh, for your own purposes to use whatever you want there is the different stages of creating an upset square corner. Now these aren't drawn to scale or anything, some of them are bigger than the others, but the principle is the same. So step one, you have your selected piece of bar stock. Your selected piece of bar stock can be any size. In this case it was 3 8 it can be smaller than that, it can be heavier than that. The note that I want to put out about step one is the thicker the piece you start with, the easier it is to create an upset square corner in. Again. The thicker the material, the longer it stays hot, the easier the next steps are going to come to be able to create a corner in it. Now, step two, that we're gonna call it, number two, step two, is creating an upset, or a center area that is larger in cross-section than the starting parent bar stock. This here doesn't have to be a crazy big upset, and it takes a little bit to figure out how big exactly this needs to be, how much this needs to grow. But just an average rule of thumb that I look at is roughly, if you can picture it, if this is, say, one inch, I would like to see this grow in thickness in both directions about a third of that to a half. So we would say, you know, maybe a half inch. So if this is one inch square, this would be about inch and a half square, so to speak. If you were to measure around the dimensions of this, it would be an inch and a half square as where this would, the parent bar stock would be inch, if that makes sense in total. So it would gain about a quarter inch in upset on all four sides of the square. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, put it down in the comment section down below. Like I said, there'll be another video on this. Step three, after this short upset has been made, you need to take and do the initial bend. Now, the initial bend is just to start putting the material in the correct places where you want it to be. You know that this portion of the bar, however long it may be, is gonna be one 
part leading up to the bin, and then you know your original parent bar stock is going to be the other part leading up into that corner or where that bin's at. And we need to take and start that over the edge of the anvil. So if you picture the edge of the anvil, it's somewhere about right in here when we start that bend. We just need to be able to get that mass, that outside corner mass to start bending or arcing. That's the first stage. At this point, we don't want to create any sharp corners. We just want to get most of the mass bent into shape, into an L shape. And that's where number four will look like. You're just going to continue to dress that until you start looking like this. Now we are going to begin to work the mass up against the corner or whatever radius you want. If you want this more radius, put it on a larger radius edged anvil or block in order to take and keep a good radius on the inside of this while you work on getting that outside square corner going. Okay? But then we're going to start hammering from this side and this side. So from back face hammer blows to half on half off blows and the like to take and compress this material to create this square corner here in the corner, right here. Okay? At the same time that is going to begin to work the two surfaces of this material straight up and straight out like this and start pushing it into our final form which is the square corner. So there's five relatively easy steps that are very hard to take and actually accomplish with a great degree of skill. It's a fairly basic principle and it's a fundamental but it is difficult to obtain and here's why. Most people will start having a problem about right here. They do not do the upset first. They create the bend then they try to upset the material into that bend. But this has a major drawback and I'm going to draw this out on the table for you right here. Okay? This has a drawback. As you've seen, you bend it, people forget to do this upset, and in some cases it's not always entirely possible to do an upset in the mid bar where you would like it to be. Sometimes this is not the possibility, so I'm not ragging on the method, I'm just saying that it creates an interesting issue when we go to actually try to accomplish this. We go straight to the bend. We take a plain parent bar and we start bending it over. Okay, and then we start working the material. The problem is, since we don't have enough material to begin with, excess material, we have nothing to thin out, okay, to do any of our dressing work. So that means we thin the parent bar material or draw away from a square corner, or we try our best effort after the bend is done to push the material to thicken it to create that square corner but that often leaves us with a problem and the problem looks like this now I'm going to try to draw this out the best I can you're just going to have to bear with me and uh, yeah just bear with me <laughs> It is, I'm, I'm not the greatest drawler on the face of this earth, so I'm trying to do this one-handed so I don't get in front of the camera. Getting, getting two out there. So what ends up happening is we have this suck down right here in the corner. And what this is, is this is the beginning of a cold shut, and this is a stress riser. So it will create stress in this joint, so if this had to be a mechanical put in use for any sort of mechanical purposes other than decorative, it will fail on this corner, most likely, because your grain structure pinches off into that area, and therefore it's going to end up, it's almost like shearing it off, essentially. But why does this form? This forms because you have to treat the bar as having two surfaces. There's a surface material here and there's a surface material from the bottom. That surface material as you're upsetting it this has infinity to run out to. 
Well, I'm horrible at drawing affinity, ain't I? This here has infinity to draw out to. So does this in this direction. Pushing material down in that direction and pushing material out in that direction creates infinity. This can go out forever out in this area because there's nothing to resist it, so to speak, okay? But the internal, you have to remember, you are also moving this internal surface area at approximately the same rate. But as you can tell, unlike the outside corner, you don't got infinity. You're running into a brick wall. And so what it does is these two surfaces materials start colliding and they go down just like that. And that's what creates that inside corner there. Problem. One of the other, and that's the most common reason why that gets created there. One of the second most common reasons is you start your square in here too soon and you create a notch. You create a notch right here in this elbow before you even get started. So you start your square inside corner too soon and then you go to dress out this outside edge and you just keep pushing that notch deeper and deeper within the bar as it shears off. That is the other common denominator amongst where upset square corners fail, okay? Is you start the square prematurely, so to speak. So that's the theory behind upset square corners. If you give this method a try, try upsetting the bar locally first then doing a nice long bend on it. You can even perform this over the horn of the anvil instead of the edge of the anvil. Then dress the inside square of that corner and then finish it off with dressing the outside material thickness to match to get that classic really nice square corner. Do not fall into the pitfalls of hammering up here and driving this piece down into this piece and so on and so forth and create yourself these nice uh, big crack points here. That's the problem with it. That's one problem with doing that method and you have to be very, very careful. They're very easy to start forming and there's really only one way of getting them out and that's to file them out. Once it's to this stage, you pretty much all but lost it. And as long as it's in a decorative piece, I guess it won't matter that much other than looking a little ugly. But if it had to be a mechanical piece, something that formed a function, this is not mechanically stable. Stable or sound, I should say. So go ahead and get you a good screenshot of that. That's going to be it for this video here. Be on the lookout for the next video. If it's already out, it will be linked up at the end of this video of me putting all these things into practice in a video format to where you can see how I overcome this. And in that video, I will actually do the layout, how I lay out a square corner and figure out how much material loss I will have. So this way you can do stuff like make boxes and picture frames and things like that. So that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a big thumbs down. At any rate, I greatly appreciate the feedback. And like I always say, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one.